Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to go over some footage of me going up to Wyoming and doing some varmint hunting with my 224 Valkyrie. So, so far all I've heard about the 224 Valkyrie are about its long range capabilities. Um, what about varminting? So, this is able to launch a 22 caliber projectile faster than a 223 with the same length barrel, so this should make a really good varmint round, right? So. I was able to go across state lines up into Wyoming. Um, we had spoken with a landowner up there who has a farm who's been having an issue with big craters on the ground dug out by prairie dogs. So we decided to go up there and do a little bit of pest control. I was able to bring along my Nexus Outdoors U-mount, which is a digital camera mount for your rifle. Essentially, you can clamp this on your gun and you're able to put your phone to where it looks down the side of the rifle or through the optic or even back at yourself. So I decided to run it through the optic and get a little bit of scope camera footage of actually going varminting. So just a heads up, this video is pretty graphic. It's going to show a first-hand perspective of doing some varmint shooting. So before we get to the footage of actually varminting, I'm gonna run you over the rifle setup and what I've got going on with this AR-15. All right guys, this is my AR-15, which is chambered in 224 Valkyrie. Let's start from the rear and we'll work our way from the rear bottom up to the top front. So in the back we got a Magpul stock. This is their A2 style just rifle stock. This butt plate back here moves around and uh, I like the A2 stock. It's simple. There's nothing to adjust. There's no wiggling. They're just super solid with a rifle length buffer tube. I've got a Hogue rubberized grip and then I've got a Rock River Arms two-stage trigger. This is like the low-end two-stage one they make. Pretty much their cheapest version they do. The lower itself is an Aero Precision M4E1, so it's got a little bit different styling on it, like uh, you've got a solid little trigger guard right here, and then uh, instead of round corners, it's a little more squared off, which I think fits the build a little bit better. As far as the upper receiver is concerned, you might notice this thing hanging out, and what this is, is a bolt action. This is a bolt action AR-15 from Uinta Precision. This is a company that makes these in Utah which is really awesome. You make bolt action AR-15 and bolt action AR-10 uppers. I have one in AR-10 as well. It's a 6.5 Creedmoor. This one is a 224 Valkyrie. Um, so the magazine that I use for my 224 Valkyrie is an Elander magazine, and this is actually for 6.5 Grendel. Uh, this is just kind of experimental. I wanted to see how it would work. Um, I'd need to get me a 6.8 SPC mag and see if there's any difference between the two but I know that the cartridge design is fairly similar to 6.5 Grendel, so I wanted to try it out with this. Moving forward, a uh, fully free-floated barrel. The barrel is 22 inches long. It's a 1 to 7 twist. And then way out front here, I've got a Wit Machine Muzzle Rise Eliminator, which uh, greatly reduces recoil. Now moving up, we've got a Cytron S3 8-30 8 to 32 by 56, so it's got a great big objective lens hanging out here. It's in a one-piece AR stoner mount that has built-in 20 MOA in the AR stoner mount. This one's an MOA, and uh, most of the footage is actually going to be, uh, most of the footage was filmed on 8 power, maybe one of them is on 12 power. So it is a second focal plane scope, and the reticle is fairly simple. It's got a nice dot in the center to help keep you on target. This is a fake Atlas bipod I've got on here. It's adjustable and uh, it works just fine. It pans and tilts and the legs extend and all that jazz. So here's what it looks like when you're behind the camera on the rifle. You're able to see right through your optic. You can see your crosshairs in there. It makes it super easy to get behind it and shoot. Here's what the mount itself looks like. It clamps into your phone here. It's adjustable left to right, up and down, and then front to back to get your correct eye relief. Uh, this is a Nexus Outdoors U-mount. There's a link to this in the description to their website as well as their Instagram. Uh, check out their Instagram if you want to see some cool content like uh, clearing rooms with the SWAT team or even some more hunting footage. So Nexus Outdoors U-Mount is what made this video possible. So be sure to check them out. And uh, let's go out and check out using a 224 Valkyrie on some varmints. 224 Valkyrie claims its first prairie dog. Shooting a 53 grain Hornady V Max, probably over 3,200 feet a second.
right, so for the 224 Valkyrie reloading it, if you need load data for this cartridge, the two places that I've found it are Sierra's website. Sierra has load data for the 224 Valkyrie in light bullets all the way up to heavy bullets. And then also Hodgden just came out with reloading data for it as well. So check those two sources. They're both free at the moment. And I would highly suggest going out and getting a print or screenshot them on your phone online or do whatever you need to do to save it while it's free. So the powder that I have to use with this cartridge is H4895. This is a pretty fast powder. It's pretty fine as well. This is part of Hodgden's Extreme line, so it's supposed to be fairly temperature insensitive. Uh, when we were out there shooting, I believe it was anywhere from 45 degrees up to 70 degrees this day. It was a little bit windy and uh, a little bit rainy. So I used H4895. I used a charge weight of 25 and a half grains. That's right in the middle of the road of Sierra's data, as well as Hodgden's. Uh, it's not quite as fast as it could be, um, but I haven't done any load development with this. These are actually my first reloads, and going hunting, I just wanted to pick a middle of the road charge. That way I didn't run into any pressure signs and ruin the trip. To ignite the powder, I've got some Remington number seven and a half small rifle bench press primers. Uh, had great performance with these. Um, we've got some fired brass right here. No pressure signs at all. Still nice rounded corners, uh, not an issue at all. Um, the shot fine, it's a bolt action, so I'm not gonna have any cycling issues. You just grab it, rip them out, slam another one in there. And the bullet that I used was a 53 grain VMAX. Uh, these have a pretty high ballistic coefficient. These are supposed to be superior to the 55 grain VMAX. They got a little boat tail on here, which makes reloading them easier when you're going to set them into the cartridge. I have some 55s that are at flat base and man, I really makes me miss my boat tails for long range shooting when I'm loading those up. Uh, I think the ballistic coefficient on them is like 0.3 something. Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head, but 53 grain. These things are designed as soon as they hit a target to basically explode. And that's exactly what you want for a varmint to uh, give them a swift death. Because it's pest control, you don't want to hurt these little things, you just want to kill them. 53 grain VMAX, Remington primers. H4895, they're 25 and a half grains, and then 2.180 as an overall length. And you can see it loaded up in the magazine here. Plenty of room to go longer with this cartridge. You got uh, probably a tenth of an inch or even more, probably two tenths of an inch there to stretch this cartridge out, which is good because you're gonna want extra room for this longer bullets like 90 grains and 95 grains, things like that. Uh, this is an Elander magazine again. This one's steel, so it's probably going to get you a little more room in your mag than some of the other ones, possibly. 2.180 overall length. If you, you may have noticed, you may have noticed this one in here. It's colored black with a sharpie. I use this to uh, load it into the chamber and make sure that my lands weren't scraping the bullet at the suggested overall length. Not an issue there. I didn't measure them out to see how long it would take to get them onto the lands. Usually the VMAX bullets are pretty jump tolerant and that's not an issue at all. As far as velocity goes, I've got a 22 inch barrel and uh, I believe the load data says that that should be around 3150 to 3200 feet a second, something like that. So I believe I'm right in there. Uh, even if they use the 24 inch barrel, mine's gonna be pretty similar. Um, this is the one to seven twist 22 inch barrel which uh, is a barrel manufacturer from here in Utah. The barrel manufacturer in Utah is called Match Grade Machine. Uh, I believe they're out of St. George, Utah, which is pretty cool. It might be Hurricane, Utah, I'm not sure. But shout out to Match Grade Machine, they're making the great barrels down there. If you like the reloading data section of this video, be sure to go to the Reloaders Network um, and check that place out. There's tons of guys on there that are all about reloading even just normal gun videos, product reviews, things like that. Check out the Reloaders Network. It's basically a place where people can post videos from all over the internet and link them there. It's a central hub to find content creators videos. Definitely worth checking out. Please do, I have a page there as well. I've got some exclusive content over there, like a story of my first rifle. Be sure to check that out. I've uh, written that personally, and then I even did a video where I just read what I wrote. So you don't have to read it if you don't want to. Pretty awesome. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate you sticking in this. I appreciate it if you stuck with this video for this long. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely want to get out and shoot some more varmints. I definitely want to get out and shoot some more targets. So I'm going to be doing a low development series on these 53 game VMAX. Hopefully get them accurized a little bit, push the velocity up a little bit, 
and see what this rifle is capable of. I'm sure these things are going to shoot fantastic on paper. I want to send a huge shout out to Nexus Outdoors. Thank you, Ryan, for taking me on that trip where we both went varmint shooting and uh, I wouldn't have known where to go without you, man. So I really appreciate that and it helped me greatly. So really excited to share this with you guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Comment below what you think. If you think the 224 Valkyrie is a good varminting cartridge or if you want to use something more traditional like a 223. It's a very versatile cartridge. I mean, you can download the varmint rounds to save fox furs and things like that or you can really load them hot if you're trying to knock down a coyote at distance. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys later. We'll see you in the next video.